Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Friday night in the shop and I'm actually in the shop tonight. How you guys doing? Um, I've been out here a couple times this week, tidying up, starting to prepare for winter. The weather's starting, I mean it was 30 degrees Celsius today and like 80% humidity. Um, I'm on my second shirt of the day. You guys that live in the humid climates know uh, it's often a two or three shirt day. Uh, <laughs> today was a two shirt day for me for sure. But uh, I was on the tools today, friends. I'm a sheet metal worker. Even though I'm not on the tools, I'm foreman. A tool belt's a calling. When I put that tool belt on, I feel at home. Like, I feel comfy. That's just, that's been my life for a long time. So, I was hanging sheet metal today and uh, job went well. It looked nice. Uh, I It's actually funny. I wondered if I would get rusty. Because I was off last year. And I've been back at work for about a year, friends. But... Um, almost a year. Um, I haven't done a ton of sheet metal since I've been back and it's actually funny. Uh, I'm not rusty at all. I guess I've just been doing it for so long. It just, you know, uh, habits, I guess. You do something long enough and uh, the muscle memory kicks in. Anyhow, um, today's video is going to be a little bit of a quicker video. We have company over, friends. Um, my mother-in-law came to stay with us and hang out with baby Charlie. And uh, my brother-in-law is bringing out dinner tonight, so we're going to have a nice Friday dinner. But I wanted to jump in and hang out with you guys for a little bit. Today's video, I'm kind of curious. See, so I'm building this 460, MS 460 still. I had a 461, you guys that have been around remember, I really like that saw. Problem was, it sat on the shelf a lot, and uh, when I heard Hogan was really interested in buying one, it's like, here, you know, and uh, I sent it his way. And, uh, but the thing was, friends, I really like that saw, um, 461's a good saw. I don't know how these compare. So I'm curious, friends, and I never ran my 461 stock. Uh, I bought that blown up, rebuilt it and ported it and slapped it back together and it ran good. So I don't know if I just got lucky or that's how those things are. Anyhow, today's video, I'm kind of curious about piston weight in this saw, um, the timing's fairly spicy in these. The intake timing's kind of lazy. Um, one thing I know about stills, though, I usually don't need to intake them like I would uh, a Husqvarna, even if it's the same bore and stroke. Um, I reckon stills have a little less case capacity than a Husqvarna, is what I'm thinking. Um, the way to measure that would be to, you know, fill the crankcase with oil until it's level and, you know, measure how many cc's you put in there. But uh, just by guess, friends. But today's video, I'm curious, piston weight. This is a tiny wee. This is the OEM piston out of this 460. This is a tiny wee little piston in this thing. I'm going to do some flow tricks to it and lighten it up. But I thought, you know, before I grind on this thing, let's get a weight on it. For, for, for me to know and for you guys to know, I'll write it down in the book. I've never worked on a 460. This is my first one. So I'm kind of curious. Um... I know my, my 272 pistons generally are pretty light and uh, I have one that I've worked on and one that I haven't worked on that we can compare weights on. But first off, let's compare, like let's get a weight on the 460, this is a 52 millimeter piston. Um, let's compare it to the Meteor piston because Meteor is generally regarded as a higher quality aftermarket piston. So let's compare those two and see how close they are and then Let's check out a 372 big bore piston and see how that weighs. And then let's weigh a couple of other. Let's weigh these 272s. They're very similar in design. And uh, also, friends, I want to talk about wrist or, you know, the wrist pin location. I want to talk about that and kind of chat about what that does to a saw. Here's our scale. I'm going to zero this thing out. Let's start. Here's the OEM piston. There's a tiny wee little bit of carbon on the top, but um, I'm not super concerned with that. Okay, so 80 grams. That is a nice light piston. I'm gonna write that down in my book just as a reference so that I know. Um, that way I can, I always have notes and if I build another one or whatever or modify a piston, I kind of know where I started. Okay, it went to 81. This, uh, this scale, I noticed the, uh, the LED lights kind of mess with it. I don't know what it is, but 
I think it's the lights anyways. We'll say 80 grams, okay, friends? Let's look at the Meteor. 81 grams, so, I mean... 81 grams, so, I mean, let's be honest, the Meteor's pretty much bang on. Again, let's compare them. I showed it in the last video. Now, identical friends, okay? I, and in fact, when I'm looking at both of these, they're pretty close. Turn the light on here for you guys. I think the extra weight in this, that one gram, it's got one extra stiffening rib in the top there, okay? Now, what am I gonna do to this piston? Um, I'm gonna flow it a little bit. I'm gonna open up these windows just slightly so that we can maybe get a little more airflow into these transfers. It's always hard to show you guys this, but um, look at where the transfers are and look at where the windows are. It's just like a 288, okay? Um, my thoughts are open it up. Now that 288 I built, friends, I ran that the other day. I think it's spoiling now, so. That's been another weird saw. I've had a bad run of saws lately, but eh, that's the game we play. Um, but I'm going to do a similar build that I did to the 288. Uh, I'm going to make this thing flow more air. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy on timing numbers. Okay, so that's that's interesting. I've been using Meteor Pistons forever. And like I said, they, I mean, they're quality. Never had a bad Meteor Piston. 80, 81. Oh, <laughs> and again, friends, this is not a legal scale or anything fancy. Eh, we could even say it's 83. Either way, friends, you guys get the idea. As long as you use the same scale, I think you get a fairly accurate representation. Okay, here's a stock 272 piston. Oh no, I lied, friends. That's been in a, that's been in a lathe. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay, so there's a stock one. I've blended it a little bit. So, I mean, let's be honest. A 272 and a 460 piston weights are pretty much the same. Um, now, one difference, friends. Oh, one difference, friends. Um, just going to use the wrist pin. See, so when you're thinking of doing a piston swap, I get asked this all the time. And you're looking for a piston for your saw. And this is hard to do if you don't have a ton of pistons laying around like I do. I keep old pistons just for mock-up. Okay. 460 piston. So the wrist pin is kind of in the middle of the 460. Skirt's a little bit longer, but look. So if you were going to put this piston in a 272, look at the machine work you would have to do to adjust the squish. 272 piston is really top heavy. Um, that's just how they are. They do tend to wear, and you can see this one's got some wear. This one's been in a saw. See how it's shiny there? That's, that's wear, okay? See the bottom? There, there's a perfect example. That wear I was talking about, see how it's super shiny there? Um, this piston has 10 tanks on it, maybe. Look, it's already shining up. Um, in a ported saw, the intake's not super wide or anything like that, but... Um, okay, so you can kind of you kind of tell what your piston's going to do just based on the wrist pin location. Um, but think about it. If, you're, if your piston is really tall and it's that much higher above... The wrist pin, could that affect compression? Think about that. I want you guys to think about these things. Could that affect compression if the height from here to here is a little bit taller? Look at that, friends. I smashed my finger with a hammer the other day at work. Good times. Okay, I want you guys to think about that. All this matters or it doesn't matter. Um, I like to look at all this stuff, and it's, it's interesting how different piston designs um can can be used to change how your saw runs well and while we're here let's look at a 52 millimeter ccc forged piston 
Okay, so this is roughly 10 grams lighter than the 460 piston. 372 piston, 100 grams. That's usually about where they sit. Uh, okay, this is just a regular 52 millimeter. Uh, that's a highway big bore. 100 grams, okay? So, um, the 460's got a little bit of an advantage. Um, but the thing I kind of like about these is the wrist pin is like dead center. A lot of bearing surface on there. Um, these pistons are going to last a long time. You guys know that I've 372s. Um, they last. Not that I'm going to say a 460 wouldn't, but these pistons, um, they're, they're designed for longevity, but they are kind of heavy, friends. Okay? So all this changes my thought pattern on how a saw is going to run and what I can do with it. So once again, just because I'm flapping here, 80 grams. So we seem to be getting a consistent weight. And the other thing is, friends, okay, the OEM wrist pin. And I Again, I look at all this stuff and I love sharing it with you. See how it's tapered? Okay, it's been drilled to be lightened. 14 grams. Here's the wrist pin for the Meteor. So we could save a couple grams just by running the OEM wrist pin. And I might do that, okay? So you guys can see the ends of it there. Or I hope you can. This is the stuff I look at. And yeah, some people would say, hey, Tin Man, it's just a chainsaw. And I agree. It is. It's just a chainsaw. But if you want to make those super energetic, super powerful saws, you know, you might want to look at running piston like this that's a ccc piston you know or doing a bunch of flow work which one's been flowed this one okay this thing's been smoothed and shaped i didn't even finish this one the windows have been opened okay there's more of a stockish one that i i don't think i've ground no i haven't ground on this one at all okay so all these little things matter now, I'm not going to go hog wild with this saw, but like I'm saying, I just like to know where I'm starting. So I'm starting at 80 grams. Write it down in my book, stock, piston, 80 grams. That way I know, and I can always go back and look. Um, I write down as much information as I can, um, what my build was, my, uh, my starting timing numbers and any anomalies i'll draw pictures of my port shapes or kind of i'm just like that friends um there's so many pages in this book that are full i have another book this is kind of my once i get a good recipe i put it i put it in this book um and then i have another book that i just make random notes in you know tin man isms or tin man's thoughts and uh once i find something that i like i'll put it into this book but uh this one here, I'm just writing it down because it's like, it's good to have stock numbers in your timing book. And once you work on a few saws, you'll kind of see patterns. Sometimes they vary a little bit, but they're usually pretty bang on. Um, that's why, friends, when you guys send me timing numbers, I can kind of tell if your wheel is zeroed or not. If it's a saw that I've worked on because I have notes. And uh, I kind of know where they should time. Okay, friends, so... As soon as I get back into the shop, I'm going to start smoothing and shaping this piston. I'm going to take all the sharp edges off of the corners. I'm going to smooth the insides. I'm going to open up these windows just a hair as much as I... You got to get brave, friends, when you're grinding on your piston. But I'm going to open up those windows a hair. I bet you this piston will be about 75 grams when I'm done. And again, that's about the same weight as this racing piston. This thing... This CCC piston, friends, it's just, it's beautiful. Um, it feels like something in your hands. It's just, it's, it's like a, it's like an aerospace part. I love those Wiseco pistons. They're just nice. Anyhow, friends, so that's where I'm at with this. Um, I wanted to hang out in the shop with you guys tonight. And I was thinking about this all day. I wonder how much that piston weighs. Well, 80 grams. That's pretty light, actually. Um, nothing wrong with that for a saw this size. Um, now... I get asked this, why are you why are you worried about piston weight? Well, 
One thing I've learned over the years porting, um, you know, porting for Bucking and other folks, uh, professionals like crack is what I notice. And crack is when you touch the trigger, how quickly does it go from zero to full RPM? Well, one way I've noticed and I've learned to achieve that is to lighten the piston. A lighter piston will get going faster. So, um, I've been modifying my pistons for a while now and I'm really... You can feel it, friends. It's hard to explain, but you can feel the saw that has piston work. And of course, friends, I will definitely do another lightweight ring in this saw. Um, I like the lightweight rings. I mean, friends, look at this CCC ring. It is paper thin, okay? It's uh, it's a low tension ring, okay? When you when you squeeze it, it feels like it has a little less tension than a stock ring. So that's race car stuff, and you can make your own at home. So um, I'm gonna definitely do a low tension ring on this. And the other thing is, friends, and I get asked this too, I'm probably only gonna run a single ring on this saw. And uh, I get a lot of people that are like, how can you do that? Aren't you worried about losing compression? No. Um, you lose a little compression, friends, but not. Uh, honestly, it's minuscule. Um, it's minuscule, the compression you lose. But what you gain, you're, well, you're getting rid of parasitic dra drag and uh, maybe a little bit of heat and wear and tear. Uh, I like a single ring piston. And uh, friends, I've talked to some of the smartest guys around, uh, you know, in the chainsaw world. And uh, the consensus is they put two rings in saws. They started, you know, in the 90s, late 80s for emissions. Um, a lot of those go fast hot rod saws, they either had two thin rings, you know, like the one you find in the CCC piston, or they had a single thick ring. But two rings weren't really a common thing. Two thick rings until uh, emissions came in. So at least that's what I've heard. Um, I might be wrong about that. So, anyhow, friends, Friday night at the shop. I'm all fired up about pistons. That's the way it goes sometimes. Thanks for hanging out, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys in a couple days. Keep sending those questions of the day, and uh, I'll keep answering them. I know what you guys are thinking. Is he going to do a question of the day today? 100% I am. Today's question of the day is a doozy. It's from Alessandro Canzati. I hope I said that right, buddy. Alessandro Canzati sent about a one paragraph email, and this email was incredible. He said, Tin Man, will a Husqvarna K970 piston and cylinder fit on a 576? And I went, that's genius. And then I thought to myself, well, I have both those parts here. I do. Let's shovel these pistons out of the way and let's have a look. Maybe, maybe that would be. This is a 56 millimeter piston, friends, and it looks pretty much exactly like a 576. I wonder, maybe they are the same. Let's have a look, see. Okay, I got both of them right here. Now, before you ask, why would you do this? Because some people are gonna say that. Why would you even do that? Because it's fun. Look at the size of this piston. Um, do the math, uh, five extra, millimeters of stro of bore on the same stroke be a big saw um okay so alessandro i don't know if you can do this i'll say that right now i don't know i've never tried it but i have both of them here it's a cutoff saw and the 576 here's the first thing i would do bolt pattern okay they look fairly close the cutoff saw the back bolts are slightly wider you could probably drill that alto and make them fit so that works. The other thing is wrist pin. Now I'm going to tell you right now, the concrete saw has a way bigger wrist pin than the 576. So right there, you're probably dead in the water. Um, the other thing is, and this is something a lot of guys don't think about. I never used to. I've been building a big bore saw, friends, for like six months. Um, it's kind of mocked up, but I've been, I've been, I've been puttering here and there. One thing I learned, will this even fit in the case? This is like a two and a half inch cylinder here versus, you know, 2.2 inches. So I need like 0.3 of an inch, give or take more room, okay? Um, a lot of times you're dead in the water because your case can't accept that giant cylinder. You could machine it thinner, 
okay? You don't want to go too thin. Then the other thing is, you might have to cut the bottom of this off because it might make contact with the cylinder. Um, or it might make contact with the rod, or you, you, you never know. And then the other thing is, and I'm just flopping out loud here, when this thing goes down, often these big pistons, when you're doing a giant bore saw, they will hit on the bottom stroke. So, um, and lastly, intakes. That looks kind of like an X-Torque 372 intake. These have like a three intake setup. There's a hose in the middle and one on each side. Um, you could probably use this intake and bolt your 576 carb up so I, i'm pretty sure that would work your impulse is going to be different you could always drill a hole and impulse it from a different spot but uh that's what i know i don't know if this would work but i do have both cylinders and i thought you know that's kind of neat i wonder they look very similar i'm going to say a fella could do this swap maybe if he could get around the wrist pin issue and uh, if you had a bunch of cases, because you would have to cut a giant hole in that case even to drop this on. And then the last thing, I've gotten cylinders to fit, but I can't correct the timing enough. Sometimes your your squish ends up being, you know, a third of an inch. Well, what if your base is only, you know, half an inch? By the time you machine it down, you almost have nothing to bolt to. And then your intake timing will be way too long and... There's a lot of, it can be problematic, friends, but uh, one step at a time, you can do these crazy projects. I'm working on one right now. Uh, hopefully, it gets close enough one day that I'll show you guys. If it fails, I'll show you, but also if it works, I'll show you. But I've been working on a saw for six months, an hour here, an hour there, whenever I have time. And uh, it took me, you know, many, many, many hours just to get the cylinder bolted down onto one side of the case and the piston installed. So it's uh, it's one of those things, friends, if you want to do a project like this, be in for the long haul because they you can't rush them and they do take time. Anyhow, Alessandro, thanks for sending that. I never even considered that swap. They're, they're similar, um, very similar. Is there a smaller concrete saw on that chassis that maybe has a bigger cylinder than this? That might be doable. Um, if the wrist pins are the same size, the swap goes a lot easier. I'm just going to put that out there. Anyhow, thanks for that question of the day. That was fun. I enjoyed that one. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.